Hey, what's up, you guys? Wyatt X Edgelord here, everyone's favorite YouTuber who stutters and mispronounces. And today, as you can see in the title, we're doing something a little bit different. This is my blacklisted uh, vinyl collection. Now, at Discogs, uh, it's a place where you can pretty much buy almost every record ever made, practically, if it's documented. And uh, there are a select few for certain reasons that are blacklisted, not permitted on the website and I have my own personal views about that which I'm not going to dive into but it's understandable that they can do that it's discogs they can do as they please with their website but uh, every now and then I'm lucky enough that I, I can tell when a record's gonna get blacklisted and every now and then I'm lucky enough to get it just before it gets blacklisted or I know some certain labels or distros that sell these blacklisted items and uh, I'm just going to say this before we get into this video about everything I own that is blacklisted on Discogs. Uh, I'm going to just say it once. I'm right here. All right, I'm, I bought these records only for the music, and that's it. Simply put, if you make good music to my liking, I will buy it and listen to it. Simple as that. I view it as life is too short for me to be worrying about what I should and can't listen to. All right? And I know people have different beliefs with me with this style, with this type of you know music that's either NS or very racial or very uh, very sexual in a very pedophilia way, which I don't have any of that at least. Um, it's you know we all have different views, and I understand. I'm not gonna call you out, or call you a fucking pussy or or uh, a little PC bitch. No, if you you know these lyrical themes, these ideologies might affect you, or, or you might perceive it in a totally different way than me, and that's understandable as hell. All right, I'm not calling anyone names or anything here, but like I said, if you make good music and it's to my liking, I'm gonna buy it. Simple as that. So I'm just gonna keep it like that. I'm not gonna repeat myself again after every release or at the end of the video we're gonna keep it like that so let's get into this first one this is like the only one I just I uh, I bought this through New Newberry because there had to be someone who's been collecting records of this sort who just sold all of them at Newberry and I got quite a few uh, that day I can remember it perfectly uh, speaking of which there's actually another one just realize this now uh, I'm gonna have to show off in a second wink wink uh, but this is uh, Zepsmort with Dawn of a New Era. Not really that crazy about this. How I how I bought this was I remember I bought a few records, but they had like a sale going, and it was like uh, buy two get one half off something like that. Newberry had, and this was like the only thing that caught my eye. So I bought it, and it was like I think I spent three bucks on this damn thing. And it's funny as like as I'm looking through this, I'm I'm looking at the back side. I'm like oh crap. I think I just bought an NS pan because uh, it's from Darker Than Black and put and uh, distributed through uh, Merchant of Death, which is uh, pretty much Merchant of Death is the distributor for Darker Than Black. And it's just really typical, run-of-the-mill NS black metal. There's nothing about it that really caught my eye, or ear rather. But uh, yeah, for three bucks, you can't complain, but there's really not much to say about it other than it's black metal, and that's pretty much it. So there's that. The next two are uh, bootlegs, and lately Discogs has been cracking down on bootlegs and blacklisting every bootleg out there, which um, I find it weird why I even have it in the variants part section of the record. I don't know, but they're starting to bootleg, I mean, bootleg, they're starting to blacklist bootlegs now. The first one I'm going to show you, this is Moonblood with their debut full-length uh, Loot and Krieg. Uh, Moonblood, raw black metal from Germany. A lot of people love these guys, and for good reason. They make raw black metal, cold, harsh, brittle, and just raw, pretty much. And it's a staple name, pretty much now, with uh, any type of raw black metal. And they've gotten a lot of credit for good reason. And they got a huge discography, a lot of demos, but uh, this I feel like is their highlight, and I'm, you know, it's a fan favorite for good reason. The tracks I love on here are. Uh, and, Sno and Snow Covered Their Lifeless Bodies is my personal favorite. The Infernal Masters Return, My Evil Soul, Kingdom of Forgotten Dreams. All awesome shit by Moonblood. But yeah, since this is the bootleg, as you can see, it's not hand numbered or has a label distro stamped on it anywhere. This is a bootleg that I got through Darker Than Black when they had like one of their bajillion sales. But um, 
yeah, Moonblood, Boot and Krieg. It's a bootleg. The other bootleg I own, this is Ghost Night of Ritual. This is a uh, Chicago, Illinois show they did uh, back in April 13th, 2012. This is bef right before uh, Infestismo that came out in uh, the year following. And it's pretty much a live show with uh, all the tracks from their debut full length. Not really much to say here, but surprisingly, I got this through Armageddon. And Armageddon really doesn't sell bootlegs, so I don't know how they got acquired with this. But uh, it's pretty cool either way. It's a really hard item to get, and this is the gray variant limited to 300 copies, and there's like two other variants, I think, too. But yeah, pretty cool little steal and find off of uh, Armageddon, my gut, a couple years back. Uh, next one. This recently got blacklisted along with a lot of other of their releases, which fucking suck. This is uh, Nocturnal Morum with uh, The Taste of Victory. It's a triple LP set. Pretty, actually, I don't think it's just The Taste of Victory. It comes with the EP, The Taste of Victory, along with this album right here, which I, I just straight up can't pronounce. But yeah, I got this at Newberry as well for only $11. 11 fucking dollars. And this was going at the time on Discogs when it wasn't blacklisted for like triple digits. So this is without a doubt the best uh, record find I've ever found, pretty much of a steal. But uh, yeah, just recently got blacklisted along with uh, Knee Christ, which uh, it sucks because I, I used to have Knee Christ, but I had to trade that for a record I wanted even more. But Nocturnal Mortem. Come on, guys. You should know this shit by now. Awesome, awesome, awesome symphonic folk black metal that they've just gotten better and better throughout the years. And uh, Verity, their latest full length, is one of their best uh, to date and is definitely going to be really high up on my end of the year list. But yeah, Nocturnal Mortem. Next up, this is the only one that I find stupid of being blacklisted. This is Savolder with uh, Desecration of the Five Holy Pillars. Now, this is very anti-Muslim, uh, and um, last time I checked, that is a religion, not a race. But unless there's like some lyrical content, I'm just missing out on, on this uh, for whatever reason. It is blacklisted, and I think one thing that caused a little bit of controversy with this band is if you look at its original artwork, it's not just this of uh, Mecca being destroyed, or whatever. The original artwork is a little bit more controversial, which is probably why they got a lot of shit for it. And they probably have gotten death threats, even though they're from fucking Canada. But, whatever. I guess the only reason I can see this being blacklisted is the fact that other countries in, uh, I don't know, the Middle East, you know, countries I've never stepped foot in, could take this very differently than how I perceive it, which is probably why it is blacklisted, which is, I think, a little bit unfair that uh, just because one country absolutely can't stand it shouldn't mean that the rest of the world can't get it. But it's whatever. I got. I know it's been put out through Iron Bonehead, and I bought this through uh, Hell's Headbanger, so if you can get it, get it while you can, because this is some very well-done, uh, hateful black metal from Canada. And their latest split with AMSG and Hosteam is great. It just sucks that uh, Arrogance is a part of that split. Anyway, moving on. Next two. The Rick of the Unzen Gastium split with Conflict. One of the only good bands they've ever done a split with. And uh, I bought this through uh, the vocalist of Rick of the Unzen Gastiums. He was nice enough to sell me this copy. And I got the CD through Cyclopean Eye, which they are still available on Cyclopean Eye if you want to get this. I don't know why the CD's falling out. Yeah. Also, as well, heads up. I know I said it before, but this release will be put out through vinyl by Witches Brew come the end of this month or the beginning of next month. It's going to be really soon. I'm so stoked for that. But the only thing I can see as to why this could be blacklisted, because Rick of the Unzen Gas uh, there's no reason for them being blacklisted. But the conflict side, uh, them being signed to Satanic Skinhead Propaganda, and if you look at the song titles, you might understand why. But great release. I'm not going to dive into it because I, I think I've overstayed my welcome with, like, you know, jerking my loveness to Reek of the Unsend Gas Fumes every video. So there's that. Next release, bought both of these through Discogs just before they got blacklisted. The four way split between Reek of the Unsend Gas Fumes, Durst Command, and Fog by Flesh Flies. 
Uh, only bought this for Rika the Unzen Gas Tunes because there's three other bands I can't stand, especially one of them, which I've already told you my hateness for them. You all know it. But, um, you know, what's nice about the CD is that I get to skip over all the shit I don't like. And the vinyl I like because I'm a collector of scum for Rika the Unzen Gas Tunes. But, again, this has, without a doubt, their Reek's worst material is on this. And, uh, the only really cool thing about this, actually, is the artwork. Because I've yet to ever see artwork done with, uh, the Zodiac Killer, one of the most brilliant, cunning serial killers to ever walk the face of the earth. Surprised, uh, this is the only time I've ever seen the Zodiac Killer on an album artwork. But yes, uh, this got blacklisted right away and I just got it in time because I think the moment this shipped out it got blacklisted so I'm really lucky I got this in time and last one that has reek on it this is the uh, triple axis inspired split with uh, reek of the unzen gas fumes uh, they they Dol Rosa they the Dolcera and uh, this German band I can't fucking pronounce to save my life. So if you want to check them out, which I don't recommend because they're pretty, pretty boring. Uh, just pause it. If I can stand still, I know I'm shaking like fucking someone on schizophrenia. But uh, check it out. But literally, I am I know I'm going to sound like such a fucking fanboy. But guys, Reek is like the only thing about this that's fucking redeemable. The other two bands are so boring. Put this into perspective, okay, in terms of, like, energy and rawness and, you know, just... Uh, Reek of the Unzen Gas Fumes, their side is equivalent to a prison riot, all right? Just violence and energy and explosions and just chaos everywhere. The other two bands, the energy they put off with is equivalent to going to church with your grandma and drinking some afternoon tea. It's so fucking boring, okay? I can't stress you all fucking boring the other two bands are. But, yes, uh, once again, this got blacklisted uh, recently just after it got um, put up on Discogs, which is surprising because I bought it through Discogs once again because Merchant of Death and, um, who's the other? Yeah, Merchant of Death, this sold out pretty quickly, but really lucky to have this as well. Next up, we got some Aryan Blood. I, this is the split he did with Satanic Warmaster. I own both variants. A friend of mine was really humble and nice enough to sell this to me. And only bought this for the Aryan Blood side. Never been crazy for Satanic Warmaster. I've tried so many releases and it's just never clicked with me. Although he is he was pretty... He was a fun uh, view at the Hell's Head Bash that I saw a couple years ago. But this comes on two different variants. And I own both of them. So the first one is black, limited to 912 copies. So if you're pretty good at math, you can already tell what the number I'm going to say next is for the other variant. And the other variant is limited to 88 copies on green, which I just, I find this so weird of a color to, for it, but whatever but yep Aryan Blood one of the very 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 few NS black metal bands I think that are really really good one of the very few there's, there's a lot of NS I've heard that is just meh but these guys or this guy I should say because I think it's a one man project makes some killer riffs yep the two way split between Aryan Blood and Satanic War Master thanks again to the person who sold me this and he also sold me this as well, which uh, I remember he was almost like bidding it. I was like, dude, whatever the other person bids, just add $10 to it, and that's my bid. This is the compilation of Aryan Blood uh, through Struggle to Victory. Um, you know who you are who sold me this. Thanks a fuck ton once again for selling me this. Um, yeah, limited again to 88 copies, and this has been long gone sold out. And it's been long, long blacklisted for quite a while. But, yeah, I, I can't deny it. This dude makes some awesome killer fucking riffs for black metal. And he's got a lot of energy with his vocals. Again, um, some of the riffs on here can be a 
tad bit cheesy. I know he's going for that victory sound, but it just comes off a little bit cheesy. Let me just replay that. But yeah, Aryan Blood through struggle and victory. Killer fucking shit. So there is that. And the last one, um, got this through, oh, what's, what's the place again? Purchase Street Records, like a two minute walk away from my house that just, it recently opened up last year. And I would go there so much more if the dude learned how to like price his vinyl because he overprices so much stupid shit. But this was one of the very few he priced at a reasonable price, and it's actually a, quite a steal of a price, too. This is Argus Lent with Incograble Bigotry. Um, yeah, this is not even remotely subtle. This is just fucking retardedly racist when you read the lyric sheet. But this is an original first press put out through Death to Mankind, which is really cool because this you know, went for some big money before it got blacklisted a, a while back. But this is, like I've said before, this is just shitty people making some of the best fucking death metal riffs I've ever heard in my goddamn life. I can't deny it. Th these, these riffs are so damn good! I have to yell it out how good they are. Sorry about that. Rest in peace to all my headphone users. Ah, uh, I can't deny it. Even though that, that artwork is just so insanely fucked up. But... Argus Lint. Yes, terrible people making some of the best death metal I've ever heard. Bought it used and kind of abused pretty much because it's not in perfect condition through uh, Purchase Street Records and I got it for a steal of a price considering what it usually used to go for. But yeah guys, that is my collection that I own of everything that is blacklisted. If you guys want to tell me what you got or make a video response, go right fucking ahead. And yeah, that is that for this video. So hopefully you guys discovered something new. Thanks for watching, liking, supporting, and subscribing. You guys are the best, and good listens.